If you've ever wondered what the inside of a battery looks like, well, here's your answer. Batteries basically consist of 36 inch long strips coated with chemicals. These strips, otherwise known as the cathode and the anode, are then tightly wound up like a cinnamon roll into a small canister. The lithium ions move from anode to cathode and then when you're you're charging and discharging, they move back and forth. Right. So you're, you're applying an electric current, moving all the uh, lithium ions back, and then you're discharging it. The problem is that consumers want more and more power out of these things every year. But a few small manufacturing mistakes and foosh, you've got yourself a short and an explosion. Imara, a battery startup that got spun out of SRI, says it can get around a lot of these traditional problems by the way it coats the cathode and the anode. What secret sauce did you come up with that they did? That's uh, it's a uh, better way to uh, deal with the underlying materials so that we get better packing density, and which translates to more energy density and more runtime. And then we're also able to, from the structure of the materials, get better power capability out of it, which is effectively a function of lithium insertion rates and how fast you can move the electrons in and out of the cathode and the anode. So what's that mean to you? Well, with these kind of batteries, things like power tools or electric scooters will go farther on a single charge and cost a lot less. You could even get an electric lawnmower. Eventually, Amara wants to get into the market for cars. Because of our better energy density we can, and our high power density, we can do as hard a job as you can find across the power tools, and that's power density. And then we can do more actions, so more crimps, more screws driven, more holes drilled. So we're seeing um, a 20% or so more work done with our batteries. Let's take a look at the manufacturing process. First, they cook up a chemical slurry in a giant vat. Then it's passed through this three-section oven. Essentially, they're baking chemicals onto a metal substrate. Then you take the sheet that comes out of the oven and run it between these two giant 3,000 pound rollers to squish it down, sort of like making pizza dough. The sheet is almost uniformly flat. The thickness at one end is within a micron of the thickness at the other end. Once you squish the material, you cut it into strips and roll it up into batteries. And once the batteries are rolled up, they get tested. In the meantime, researchers at the company continue to tinker with the chemistry formulas. Yamara is unique in that it can actually accommodate a lot of different chemistries. We can adapt the uh, product and the chemistry to a specific customer application, uh, which is nice from their perspective. So they can trade off a little more power for more energy or more cycle life, depending on what their specific application needs. This plant in Silicon Valley will eventually be capable of churning out a million cells a year. Power storage is one of the top three big issues in green tech right now. The other two are smart grid and clean coal. Some of the battery startups include PowerGenix, ZPower, A123 Systems, and Boston Power, which is actually a close rival to Amara. Although they all want to get into cars, most of these companies are going to have to start with notebooks and power tools. So keep an eye out for that electric lawnmower. I'm Michael Canellas for Green Tech Media.